The quickest summary I can give if you just want to watch the first 30 seconds and have me tell you what I'm about to say, think about your adverbs that you're going to be using and try and change them, get rid of them and instead you know, use the old show, don't tell. Instead of saying cautiously, describe how their steps are very, very slow and methodical. They're constantly looking down to make sure they're not stepping on anything. Show, don't tell, gonna massively improve your DM descriptions. With that, let's get right into the video. Hey guys, Sebastian here from Sebastian's Cauldron. Today we are talking about DM descriptions. We're taking a little break from my fantasy and firearm series, although if you wanna check that out, I'll put a little card right up there, you can click on that, give it a watch. But today I wanted to talk really quickly about DM descriptions. Your descriptions are one of the most important parts of your game. It's sort of the crux of what D&D and other tabletop role-playing games are. It's your imagination, your evocative language that you use in order to create the world, the story, the characters, the setting, everything. So you wanna make sure that your descriptions are on point, they are conveying the image, the ideas that you're trying to get across, and you are giving enough clarity that your players, your friends and everything can perfectly imagine and envision what it is that you're trying to do. Many people have different ways of doing descriptions. Some will completely improvise just based off of their own imagination. Others will use reference images that they can use to then describe and give the description. Other people will write out long lengthy paragraphs or even just bullet points in order to you know, give them ideas and everything. I'm a bit more of an improviser. I sometimes will do dot points if I have a very specific thing that I need to describe, but often I cannot predict what my players are going to do and it's very difficult for me to just try and write descriptions for every possible little thing that they could be doing. But no matter which way you do it, there is one little tip that I want to give you guys that you can use to vastly improve your descriptions. And this comes from a very old tip that people will use when writing. Uh, both in creative fiction and I guess in non-fiction as well, which is show, don't tell. So what is show, don't tell? Well, it's something that is used very commonly in writing. I've been writing a lot lately and so I've been thinking about this and I realized that it sort of makes sense as well when you're thinking about DM descriptions. You want to not tell the reader, or in this case, tell your players what emotion or what action they are doing. You instead want to show them that. This is going to vastly make your descriptions more concrete. We're gonna go up the, Brandon Sanderson talks a lot about levels of abstraction. You wanna go higher up in the levels of abstraction when doing your descriptions. Something that would be fairly abstract would be the idea of a household pet. Now we would probably assume the usual, you know, cat, dog, maybe a little gerbil or something. I don't know, do we have those in Australia? I'm actually not sure. But those are, you can imagine a few different variants of that. Even a dog itself can be fairly abstract. And as you add more descriptors, add more information about the dog, it is gonna go higher up towards more concrete. For example, if I said dog, you might picture a great big German Shepherd or perhaps a small Staffy or something. But if I was to specifically say a white Labrador that seemed to have a limp as it walked across the room, you would be able to picture a very similar Labrador. So when you are making descriptions, you wanna make sure that you are giving enough details so that your players or readers are able to really capture this image that you are creating. Furthermore, you don't just want to tell your players what they are thinking or what they are feeling. You want to show it. If you are in a tavern and you look around, you're supposed to meet a client, someone who's trying to make a shady deal and sell out their boss, and are presumably a bit nervous, it would be much more evocative, much more interesting if your DM describes a man sitting up at the bar, he's tapping his foot repeatedly, he's using a small dagger or something to carve into the bar, he seems to be quite nervous, he's looking around, his eyes are constantly darting back and forth. That is a far more interesting description than saying, oh, you see a man up at the bar, he looks anxious and nervous. 
that's, uh, it's, you get the idea that yes, this is an anxious and nervous man when you are told that, but you don't really have those concrete sort of details that you would really need. And this can really help in bringing some life, bringing some character to your NPCs. You can use this in a lot of different situations. In writing, these commonly come in the form of adverbs. So you might have a piece of dialogue, blah, 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 he said anxiously. You could instead replace the anxiously with blah, 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 blah. His fingers were repeatedly tapping against the bar and his foot was jumping up and down, his eyes darting back and forth. That's a very similar description to what I just said, but you get the idea. I am not saying that you should get rid of every single adverb, although if you could, you would probably be a better descriptor, better writer and everything. However, adverbs do have their place. If you're trying to do a really punchy, fast scene, you can throw in some adverbs in that. That's totally fine. You can really speed things up. You can push your players through a scene really quickly. Sometimes it is better to just push through the action rather than trying to describe every single minute little movement that is involved in bringing a sword down or in casting a spell. If your BBEG is both feared and respected by his cronies, instead of just telling the players that he is feared and respected, you could have his entrance met with very snappy salutes, but you notice that their salutes are shaky, that they can't seem to make eye contact. All of them are staring down at the ground, refusing to look up at his imposing and menacing form. If you are meeting a young wizard who is inquisitive and hungers for knowledge, instead of telling the players that she is desiring lots and lots of knowledge, you could simply have her coming into the bar or something with a huge stack of books that's taller than her. She tries to shove them all into a bag of holding, but they all spill down onto the floor, creating a little comedic scene and also telling us a lot about this NPC's character and personality. In combat too, if you have really dramatic fights or if you want to beef up your descriptions, then try and get rid of those adverbs that you might use. Instead of saying that he brought the mace down viciously, you could say that he brought it down fast and hard, a wolf-like snarl forming on his face as he brings the mace down. You barely manage to duck out of the way as you raise your shield, feeling part of it splinter off as the mace makes contact. That's a much better description than he swings the mace viciously, but you dodge out of the way using your shield to block it. Again, the second one, it's got its place if you're trying to speed things up, but you should always have a flair for the dramatic. In my opinion, it is the best part about D&D, about other role-playing games. Of course, this advice isn't just for DMs. If you're a player, if you like narrating your own actions, try and do some of this. Instead of saying your character is, you know, anxious or something, you could use some of those descriptors that I said. If they're angry, you can try and describe maybe how they feel red in the face. They feel that rage boiling up inside. They're repeatedly sort of punching the table that they're at because, you know, they just need to do something about it. Now, if you're just starting off trying to do something like this and you're a bit worried that perhaps what you're trying to convey isn't clear, you can do something which isn't usually advised, but I'm saying you could do it. You can, instead of show, don't tell, you can show and then tell. So if you are worried that your players are going to misinterpret your description of the tapping anxious man as something not anxious, you could then say after your description that he is he appears to be anxious. There's nothing wrong with that. This is just a little tip, a little tool in your DM toolbox that you can use to really beef up and improve your descriptions. You can do this in a variety of ways. You could try and sit down and write some out just to get a feel of how you could use it. You can spend some time, even if you're ever like people watching or something, look at people, try and figure out what emotions or what their thoughts are just based on their actions alone. You'll find that this is a really fun exercise. It's really creative, it's really imaginative, and you can pick up on a lot of people's interesting quirks that you might not have noticed until now. So that is hopefully a short video. That's my little tip. Show, don't tell, get rid of those adverbs. Beef up your descriptions. Your players will love it. You'll love it as well. You can look at, I think Matt Mercer is the quintessential example of a DM. He does a lot of this. Brennan Lee Mulligan, Dimension 20 is also fantastic. You can check those guys out. If you like this video, you can do all the usual stuff. You can like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I have other videos. We're doing, like I said, a firearms and fantasy series. And 
and for whatever reason my Lost Minds of Fandelver series seems to be becoming really popular, which is awesome. So if you're looking to start D&D, you should check that out. You can look at all the other videos that I have and I'll see you guys some other time.